Okay. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is right, Juan Patoris from the Burelich Union in the Fall Triangle. I'm here Jim. with Clinton Brewer. Oh, Jim, Jim. Okay, I know Jim. And uh, he's uh, the owner of the of the land that is uh, currently oh. under threat. And I'm just going to ask him to to tell us his whole story. No, sir, Clinton, thank you. Hi, sir. How are you? Um, basically, on the 29th of May, this is when this is start, when it started. Um, we had one shack removed off plot 137, um, which I contacted our ward councillor. Uh, Leslie Fisser, who helped yeah. get the, well, ha helped have the shack removed. No, then no, on no, the no, Saturday no, of no, the 31st no, of May, no, um, no. on my way home from Walkerville, I was, I approached three black guys in the streets and um, yeah, asked them what were they doing. They basically told me they had to take our land and um, that's, there is no stopping them. When I asked them what was the reason for them taking our land, they said to us they're tired of their people being killed they in our area, food, which um, I don't understand need because need we haven't had any cases reported at our local police station for murders and crime as, as per usual. You have your normal petty crimes That's like you would have in town, the but the um, nothing ma also no major, major issues here. To find out on the Monday, um, I think that's the sec uh, first of Jul uh, June, uh, they were already erecting shacks on plot 138. So I contacted the owner of 138 and uh, we requested for them to please open up a case for trespassing at the Libya police station. To find out on the Thursday of this that week that um, a case at the Libya police station still had not been opened. When I queried this with our council, um, they were not aware of this. So I asked all landowners and residents in Elanswantain to please help me and to assist me by going to the police station in numbers so that we could open up a case and force them to open up a case, um, which we did. Captain Jordan at the Dedea police station only allowed us to open one case which he said that was one case would be enough for the entire of Airlines for okay. In return, um, we were told that on that Friday that they were going to be having a meeting on the following Monday and that we can, there was nothing we could do until they had had the meeting on the Monday. But in return, I got hold of Afri Forum and explained the situation to Afri Forum and Afri Forum stepped in to assist us um, legally to get proceedings, proceedings happening in our area. Um, basically, on the Monday when we had the meeting at uh, the Dodea Police Station, we were told all the rules and regulations of what we are not allowed to do as landowners. First, they started off with a 24-hour, uh, then 36-hour and 72-hour story about once a shack has been erected, we cannot remove it. Um, explaining to them that we had been trying for an entire week to open up a case for trespassing and the, the police station were denying us that right to do so. Um, as well as we were getting constant flack from the police station every time we phoned in to complain or ask for assistance. They wouldn't, uh, their excuse was basically that um, they are understaffed and they don't have vehicles to send out to us. So that was the first our basic, our first week. Um, Afri Forum helped assist us get to get court in, a court interdict and court order to have people removed off of six properties. After we had done the eviction on the Tuesday, I'm just not sure on the date at the moment, um, we, had, after we had them removed and Midvale Council stepped in as well as the police to have the shacks removed off the properties. But in the same time, as fast as what the shacks were being removed, the minute the people dispersed, the shacks reappeared. It's been a constant fight yeah, yeah. and a daily fight. Our lives have been threatened. Um, yeah. just once we have spoken to a few people, well, there was a green golf and an Audi, and they were driving around the area and threatening us, telling us that they were going to burn us alive in tires with our kids and our children. These people knew us by our names, surnames. They knew how many people lived in our homes. They knew what cars we drive. They knew basically anything and everything. 
that we were requesting from council yeah, to please help us and assist us, which council was not giving us. So it was just basically a dead stop every single day. You know, if we said one, if we asked yeah, the police, if we asked for the police to be sent out, after we had calmed the situation down two to three hours and the police mm -hmm. came out. Not, not to discredit our council in any way, they have, they have assisted us, but they have not stopped the situation. Every time we have asked for assistance from them to please help us, it's just been a delay on a daily basis. And, um, you know, it's got to the point where I started posting things on social media, and I think by me doing that, um, my my group of people is not very big. The I've asked as many people to share. We have videos of the police denying us the right to open cases. We have videos of people of us as residents being threatened by these people, as well as um, it's, a, it's a it's a daily fight. You know, I just I, I don't have as many words to describe what we we're going through on a daily basis. Um, I've had to ask communities, I've had to ask Afri Forum, the Freedom Front, um, the Griffin family, the Buddha yes, Legion. Legion, as well as the NC, NCA, to please help and assist, which they have been outstanding and have helped us in every way. One phone call and these people dropped everything in their power to help us and assist us. Our biggest problem in this area is if they take a lunch container, they will be taking the entire vault triangle. And it's not just, we've been told a lunch container is the testing ground for them. And if they get it right here, we will lose, we will lose our homes. We have nowhere to go. Um, I don't have enough money to go and start, start over. I don't have enough money to go and buy another house. It is... It is hard, it's been a daily fight, and us as residents, my mother, myself, uh, what we were threatened again this morning at our gates. I've had to have people guard me 24 seven just to feel safe in my own home. And I've never had to feel like this in 40 years. And it, it's, 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 it's frustrating, we just don't know, we don't know which way to turn and which, in which, in which direction to go because do we leave our home and just move, or do we stay and fight? Um, my opinion, if we don't stay and fight, we're going to lose everything. And it's hard. It's, um, I, I just don't have enough words to express it. My whole reason for Saturday the 4th of uh, July was to get landowners together to stand up and show presence, show these people, we also in numbers, we can take back our land. My whole objective to this is if we can get this right in Erlang's Fontaine, we can take back our country, we can make a difference, we can save farmers, we can save other people's lives. So this is a fight, a fight for our country, not just a fight for myself or for my home. I'm looking out basically for 170 plots, 175 plots in Erlang's Fontaine. And I've been fighting a constant fight for the last six weeks and we're not getting any assistance from government. We're not getting any assistance from the police. We've got to beg and plead just, just for security and for help. You know, where in, per, personal individ, individuals and farmers and outside organizations have stepped in to help us and assist us. So my whole point is it's not to say our council hasn't done anything for us or haven't helped us. Yes, they did get the... the the blanket order for the for Airlines Fontaine. But they have not solved the situation. Every time we phone them, it's a it's a story. It's a another delay. It's another day. You know, what are they waiting for? For one of us to die first before something's gonna happen and then it's gonna turn into a racial war? You know, we we in Airlines Fontaine are a community of black, white, colored, Indian. So there is no, with us, there is no discrimination. We, we all stand together. And the amount of support we had yesterday, I would just like to say thank you to everybody that has supported me and backed me up and stood with me through all of this. It's been extremely hard. As it is, today might be my last day in my own home. You know, so where do we go from here? If we don't make a stand in our country and 
fight for for our rights and fight for our homes and take back what what is ours Amen. what is South Africa come to so Excellent. basically that's my story from my side we can give a hundred other residents here a chance as well but I've been fighting this fight since 2018 and from the 29th of May 2020 it has been it's never been it's just escalated on a daily basis awesome so.